welcome back. It's still the morning brief right here on Channels Television. And we are still talking waterways and whatever happens on water, we should all be involved because, I mean, we use that route sometimes too in our lives. So we asked some questions earlier on the show. What happens when there's an emergency? What should first responders do? What are the first reactions when we see emergencies? And also when we find out that someone has been affected, what we do, do we do? So to take us through that, we have Dr. Tosin Oshikoya. She's a medical doctor, business manager, and lead trainer, Levande Healthcare. Thank you very much, Dr. Oshikoya, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. All right. My first question to yes. you will be, when an emergency happens, what should be the first reaction of responders or the captain or the passenger? So we're now talking based on the water now. Yes. Okay. Water. okay. Um, the first thing is safety. It's always the first thing before you help somebody. Is it safe for me to help you? Because there's no point you trying to help somebody and you become a victim yourself. Okay. So that's the first thing. The next thing is that if in this situation the people are taken out of the water, because that's the next thing, get them out of the water. You cannot help them while they're in the water. So if they get them to water, uh, landing surface, the boats, land, they should be placed on their back because you now want to start the assessment to see if they need CPR. So how does this relate to other cases? Not what I brought water because, yes. I mean, we've been talking yes, water, exactly. so let's tell the people how to save. Okay, so uh, the thing is, CPR by itself is the same skill no matter what situation. It is the same skill we're going to apply. The thing is that what leads to us applying that CPR, the usual thing is in the general situation, let's say it happens, something happens in this now, place and somebody yes. collapses, I'm going to start with what we call, there's a mnemonic we use called Doctors ABCD that tells us the steps, makes it easier for you to kind of plan what you're going to do. So the first one is D for danger. I'm going to check, as I said, it's always the first thing. Is it safe for me to help this person that's um, on the floor or anywhere? The next thing is I'm going to check for a response. Doctors A, B, C, D. D, R, S, A, B, C, D. I check for a response because the fact that you see somebody unconscious or on the floor or wherever, it doesn't mean that it's a medical emergency. For all you know, the person could be sleeping, could be drunk, it could be a prank. I'm going to check for a response first to let me know whether I need to start calling other people to help me in this situation. So you don't go into a kind of um, egbami, egbami, without knowing whether the person really needs that. So that's the next in response. And to check for a response, you're just going to call the person's name if you know the person, or tap them on the shoulder. The response you're looking for is that, is this person opening his eyes? Is he talking to me? Is he blinking? Because that makes sense that if the person is not doing any of these things, there's a big problem. So once you say that there's a response, you now say, okay, Mr. Lagbaja, what happened? Why are you on the floor? You can go in another direction to help this person. But if the person does not respond at all, the next thing is send for help. The ideal way, if we're teaching you, the ideal way to send for help is called the emergency medical services. So that would be what in Nigeria? You know the emergency medical services number in Nigeria? 112. One, one. It's a general thing and nobody knows. I was going to say 911. No, no, I'm not going to say that. What you're talking about saying 911 actually is that if you call 911 in Nigeria, it will redirect it, you. Absolutely. So that's fine. So we can dial 911. I don't want us to do that. I think we should Just target that. We should our own 112. <laughs> it's 112. That's yeah. a national emergency number. I don't want to go into the steps of how that one takes place. Let me just give you an overview. So you call your national uh, emergency medical number, you call colleagues, other people around, so at least somebody should start that process of getting more help while you stay with the victim. So if you don't send for help, you come back to, so I'm going down, doctors, A, B, C, D. Airway, I open the airway, don't worry. I listen, is the person breathing? I need to be sure because if you know if the person is breathing, there's something to do. If the person is not breathing or it's abnormal breathing, so, Everybody knows what normal breathing is. It's rhythmic, it's no. If you're hearing somebody do, <gasps> you know that's, that's not normal. That mm. person is not breathing, that person is dying. So you now know how to do CPR. So that's the C part. Doctors A, B, C, D, I now do CPR, and this is a defibrillator if you have an AED. So that's the usual process. We explain that that's the way you should do it. So because now it's in the water, I'm not, you know, we are all, just get the person to land, yeah. and we start off doing what we need so, to do. Mm. Cardio pulmonary resuscitation. That's Absolutely. Th that's why we have this here. Yes. Uh, perhaps. Uh, maybe you have to demonstrate it to us exactly how we work. <laughs> because a lot of people, um, especially this age of social media is quite mm. sad. Mm. That rather than do what you're about to demonstrate, people pick up their phones, 
and yes, are filming yeah. and they are going live and all of that. So maybe let's get to work. Before we start that, I want to mm. say something about the fact that if people are unconscious or presumed unconscious because you don't assume anybody's dead just because they are not moving. Assume they're unconscious and you're going to take the steps to help them. The thing about knowing that you have to do CPR is that you must do it very fast. Within four minutes of blood not getting to the brain, brain damage starts. So you have limited time. So this is not something you leave the person down and you just say, okay, call somebody else somewhere else. I need to start CPR immediately. So this is the step I'm going to show what CPR is. Before I even also, I want to add that CPR is technical. Mm. I'm just going to give you an overview. You really need to have a practical class to have an idea of what it is you're doing, really. Right. But it doesn't mean I can't show you and you have an idea of what to start because it's better to do something than to do, do nothing. nothing. Okay, so we're going to start. So this is our mannequin here. Yes, does, this does, is a CPR mannequin. Does a mannequin, mannequin have a mannequin. name? And usually in training, I ask the people to name them. So I don't know. Do you want to name him? <laughs> John, John Doe. Him. Ah, John, eh? What? <laughs> he said John like. Doe. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So I'll call him John. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'll call him John. Right. His name is... Um, so if I... Should I use the waterway as an example of... Yes, waterway. I think we use okay, waterway. so I've dragged him onto the um, land. Mr. John! Mr. John! Mr. John! He doesn't answer. I tell other people around. Okay, get um, get the ambulance. Call the emergency medical services because he needs medical care. The next thing I'm going to do is open his airway, like I said, look in his mouth. Is there anything that has gotten there I can bring out? If there is nothing, I listen for breathing. About 10 seconds, please. Not too, not too long. If I listen for breathing and I see that, okay, this man is really not breathing, I'm going to get into position. The position you get into is to interlock your hands. Put the heel of your hand on the just right in the middle bone. it's the best one so just the center of the chest because right. most of the time these people will be clothed they're having their clothes on there's no really so urgency the as well. if you know you have an aed which i don't want to start getting into you can remove it in anticipation of the fact so, so what's need an to put AED? AED? oh it's a defibrillator you know those things that the shock right. the yes shock so that's heart. an ideal thing to have but not everybody has it but at least start your cpr so you interlock your hands make sure you're over the victim Let's see that we're getting your good uh, so clarity. interlock you're standing now, so interlock. everybody should learn it just interlock the yeah. next thing you must also do is make sure your hands it doesn't matter whether your you're, elbows are locked it doesn't matter whether you're right-handed so, or left handed it doesn't right. matter do what is comfortable for for you, your hands, your elbows have to be locked straight over the chest, your shoulder over the right. victim's chest, okay. the heel of your hand on the breastbone. Okay. You can see that most people know that the heart is on the left side. I didn't ask you to go to the left. Hmm. You will break ribs or rather you might break ribs. This is a strong bone that can withstand the force. That's so right. you stay there and you go down one, two, three. Now the things to, there are two things to learn there. I must give 30 compressions to two breaths. 32. That is the cycle. What does that mean? Now, 30 compressions that I'm pressing down. One, two, three, four, five. 30 That's compressions. Nice. 30 times, and I give two breaths. The cycle is I continue that cycle until help arrives. What is CPR doing? CPR's purpose is to make sure blood continues to flow around the body. Blood okay. is life. Blood must take oxygen to all the parts of the body, mm. especially the brain. So, you do 30, you wait. I do 30. No, there's no waiting. Mm. Continuous cycle. Just keep doing 30. You have to remember. 30 to, 30 to 32. Yes. So, think, think of it this way. I always use this analogy. Your heart is a pump. Consistently since you're in your mother's womb, it's been pumping. Yeah. It doesn't want a pulse. Not as a pulse, it's... Something is happening Does this somewhere. sound like uh, when the plumber was fixing one of my bathrooms, he said something called airlock. It sounds like it. So there's this uh, thing he opens up whenever the water is not flowing. Mm. And the water flows little, I but... Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm just explaining. Yes. I know, I know, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, not yes, sure similarity. I, would, I would use that analogy. Mm. The analogy I like to use is that there's an electrical pump in your house. Mm. You know, electri electrical pump is that it's always constant. Mm. So it goes, takes water everywhere. It's a two-story building and it starts from the um, ground floor, it goes up. Everywhere, bathrooms, toilets, everywhere. But suddenly the electricity ceases. That's what the cardiac arrest is. There's an ele the electrical signal ceases. So obviously your heart stops pumping. Mm. What you're not doing is to take over the function of the heart and be a manual pump for mm. the heart. You're a manual, you're a laborer trying to do this. Right. So I use that analogy that if an electrical pump goes out and you need water in your kitchen and your pump happens to have this um, 
um, maybe a long road that you can go manual. So you do this, you go out and say, no, I want water in my kitchen. I need to cook today. It's urgent. I go out, I do this, I do this. It's so, going to be hard. Mm. It's not going to be efficient. As efficient as the electrical pump. It's not going to take water everywhere. Going to take water somewhere. So that's mm -hmm. what you're doing at CPR. So let's demonstrate. Okay. One, two, uh, let's no, just. Well, just a moment. I need to put this in. Uh, yeah. Jeff and so this person just drowned. So there's perhaps water in, in the person's uh, uh, waterways or airways, Airway. lungs, yes, right? Yes. So there's water stop. What we're trying to do is to get the heart breathing again. Because that's what life is about. So when the person comes to, the person can cough the water out right but i noticed that um, in some videos you see people sitting the victim up okay so you must always do cpr with the person lying flat on the surface mm -hmm. always anybody doing any other thing is not doing cpr so you don't sit the person up you do not sit the person up. except the person, the person is conscious okay. is the person conscious no not yet. then there's no there's, there's no reason to do that except the person was not breathing i mean was breathing and it's okay I actually have no idea what the person, what is happening in that so scenario. So CPR only comes in when you're sure the person is the not person breathing. The person is not breathing. You're sure the person is not breathing and the heart is not beating. So I'm not asking a lay person to go and check for pulse. I'm going to assume it's not, once I can, I cannot feel the person breathing, I cannot hear the person breathing, I'm going to assume his pulse is not, you know, okay. except the doctor is on, on ground, that's the person that will be doing all that. Okay. So yeah, thinking of two things, to take over the function of the heart, I need to make sure it is beating in quotes so i'm going to go at 120 beats per minute in the compressions i am doing so it's a cycle i want to be kind of synchronous 32 32 so by the time i'm doing this compression i'm doing it at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute and that's why i said i can only give you an overview it's kind of it's a technical skill and you need to spend time to understand it, it and practice it because you are taking over the functions of the heart that's serious. So it's something serious. It's not something you can just go anywhere. But I'll just give you the few points that I can. That the Person, people can do. Yes, that can start immediately. Uh, yeah, okay. Person must be lying on the flat on the surface. Assess it is breathing if you can. Interlock your hands. No, but there's a step you missed. I, I think you should go back. Be sure it's not breathing. Uh, I will, uh, if he's drowning, I'll get him onto the um, okay. um, um, land uh, surface and I can check. It doesn't take, take 10 no, seconds. Pre pretend you're not a doctor. <laughs> It's, not, it's, it's difficult, but we're just laying people here. I know. I, I don't want to give too much because okay. if I was doing a, a train on this, it takes about three hours to get all the nuances right. Okay. So, you know, trying to give you all that in 10 minutes. Is, okay, yeah. so let's resuscitate this person. Let's resuscitate this person. So, he's on, the floor, he's on the table. I'm putting him on, on the floor. I've laid him out. I can check the airway. Is there anything in his mouth? Maybe when he was drowning, he swallowed something I can bring up because that would affect me breathing for him. Me. I listen. Is he breathing? He's not breathing. I interlock my hands, get into position to compress on his chest. I would go down. I only go down every 30 times and um, I breathe for him twice. But the 30 times I go down, I will go it at a rate of 120 seconds per minute. So let me do a cycle. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I breathe. I'm not going to do that. Breathe. Are you pumping air into his mouth? I'm breathing the expired air in my mouth into his okay. to kind of give him a bit of oxygen. Now, it's not mandatory in an adult that you breathe for them. Because in this situation, I don't expect anybody to have the barriers, a face shield or yeah. a face mask. So ordinary, just compressing the chest is enough to keep okay. the blood flowing. Okay. Because there's still some oxygen in the blood that can still go around. So just breathe expired air? Yes. And it's still a skill. Twice. To learn it. Yeah. Some yeah. people can go in and just start breathing just immediately. Just breathing and that, or put air in the mouth. Okay. 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 Because when you say expired air, I don't yeah. know which one is not expired. So just so I, I breathe into the mouth. All right. Right. Simple. Yes. <laughs> I think we'll need to bring you again on this show because it's a bit technical, next yes. week we will bring you because mm. we need to talk more about this. Um, people who are choking, for example, or people, well, we're gonna I mean, are foaming, foaming from the mouth. Some people are foaming from the mouth. Then how do you put air into someone who's already foaming? I know somebody gave someone water somehow, somehow. But anyway, we will bring you again no on problem. the show. No problem. Just talk but about, quickly, yes. when do you start? Very good question. So, you know, I asked, first of all, I sent for help. So when the paramedics arrive, you're not going to be there uh, um, arguing with them. They will take over. So that's one reason to stop. The next reason to stop is that the person is resuscitated. 
A person shows signs of life. He didn't show any signs of life before he started it. He's not showing signs of life. He's opening his eyes, he's breathing, he's moving. Mm. Good. The next reason which people may not like, but it's a fact, is that you're tired. Mm. It is hard. It is tasking. You get exhausted. So what is good about that is that if other people know CPR, they can take over. They can take over. So it's, it's better for all of us if all of us can do basic CPR. Just CPR. There's nothing basic. There's not just CPR. Can right. everybody do CPR? That would be great. Dr. Sikaya. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So John is no more dope. John is alive now. Okay. John is alive. That's right. We've alive brought, kicking. Mm. We've brought John alive. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Tosi Oshikoya, medical doctor, business manager, and lead trainer at Levande Healthcare. Thanks a lot for Thank your time you. on the morning brief. Well, We're we'll having go, you again. We'll definitely no have you again. We'll